Hi, everyone. Um, how many of you in this room know someone who's been diagnosed with breast cancer? Raise your hand. Wow. Take a look, keep your hands up, and just take a little look around the room. Those of you that don't have your hands up right now, your job is super important because you are holding space for everyone else here in this room. And as you can see, this cause affects a lot of people. And I know you're probably thinking of that person in your life who has been through a lot. So go ahead and just say their name and put your hand on your heart. And for those of you that maybe don't know anyone who's been diagnosed with breast cancer, just think of that one person in your life who you never ever want this to happen to and just say their name and put your hand on your heart. <laughs> and let's all just take a deep breath together. And on your exhale, just sending out so much love into the world and imagining that love coming right back to you. This energy is what her power is all about. And that's why we're here today. Um, I'm here today to share with you my story of how I created and became the Cupid Breast Foundation. My hope is that it will inspire you to take a look inside yourself and see what your unique gifts are and how you want to share those gifts with the world. <laughs> I grew up here in San Diego in a house with a single working mom, not so far from here. I grew up in Scripps Ranch. You guys probably know, it's a super nice neighborhood. But I lived in the section of that neighborhood with the apartments and the condos where all the singles mothers raised their kids. My mom, it was hard for her, but she, she worked really hard to make sure we had everything that we needed. She worked in a management role at a big company. And I remember her telling me that she was actually the first generation of women who were allowed to wear pants to work. And of course, I thought that was crazy. <laughs> a lot of my friends in their two-parent households, they experienced a lot of pressure to get good grades, to go to college, to do field hockey, and do after-school activities. My mom. She never predefined what success was going to be for me. She always told me that I could do anything and I could be anything that I wanted to be. My mom put that girl power in me early and I thank her for that. I, didn't, I had a lot of support growing up, but I didn't have a lot of structure. I wasn't told what to do or when to do it. So I had to learn from a young age how to listen to my inner voice and really later on let that inner voice guide me. <laughs> As a kid, I performed roller skating routines in the driveway. I learned how to sew so I could make my own clothes and also make Halloween costumes for me and my brother. <laughs> I loved anything that had to do with art and being creative. In high school, <laughs> this is really funny. <laughs> Um, I hated school. I spent as much time as I could in art classes, and I was the historian, so I photo documented all the events on campus. And I don't think I ever even got an A in like an academic class, but in art, I was killing it. And my senior year of high school, I was voted best dressed, so that was pretty much a claim to fame. And as you can see, I had a spiral perm, just like my mom, and wearing enough lace and ruffles to be a stunt double in Madonna's Like a Prayer video. <laughs> I had big dreams of being a fashion designer in New York City. So after high school, I went to study fashion at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles. When I was still in school, I met a girl named Kiva. This girl was crossing 15th Street in Del Mar, and she was like nobody I have ever seen. She was wearing a floppy hat made out of some drapes or something, a wrap skirt, platform shoes, mismatched socks, and bright red lipstick. I knew instantly that Kiva and I would be super good friends. <laughs> Kiva started this brand called Poot. This brand was the first ever brand that was sold in girls' skate shops. When I was in school, I worked for her sewing samples and making patterns. And her brand, Poot, coined the phrase, girls kick ass. 
And what this brand did is it cultivated a community of girls like no other. When I was 19, I was surrounded by all these girls that were weird and unique and creative, and they thought that was cool. And looking back on that, I feel so special to have been part of this community. And all of us girls, we're all still friends today doing big misfit girl boss things out in the world. So I made that dream come true of being a designer in New York City. I worked for Tommy Hilfiger for many years. And I, wanted, I miss San Diego, so I moved back home. And you know what's big in San Diego is skateboarding and action sports. So I worked in the skateboard industry for many years, designing denim for skateboard brands like Altamont, DC Shoes, and America. At the same time, my friend Mona and I, sitting right here, my friend Mona and I started this collective called Modart. We had so many friends that were artists and designers, and we wanted to create a place for them to showcase their art, a place that was beautiful and engaging. So we would put on these big art shows, just for fun parties. <laughs> uh, this is where I met an artist named Margaret Kilgallen. <laughs> Margaret was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 33. She was pregnant at the time, and she didn't want to have traditional treatment, fearing that it would harm the baby. At that time, you know, breast cancer to me was for old ladies. It was pink ribbons and three-day walks. It definitely was not something that any of my friends talked about. My friends were, you know, staying out all night at art shows and punk shows, and you know, it wasn't anywhere near our topic of conversation. And when Margaret was diagnosed, it, it hit this small community of people really hard. And just like when anything happens to any of our friends, we rally to help out. These days, you have GoFundMe and things like that, but we didn't have that then. So, we decided, Mona and I, the best thing to do was just get our friends together and help. And how could we do that? Well, I was inspired by this amazing woman. Frida Kahlo was an artist who was in a horrible accident when she was 18 years old. She broke her spinal column. And I saw this photo of her painting her own breast cast. And I thought, what a beautiful way to express yourself literally turning her body that was in so much pain into a work of art. And I felt that this was a way that we could tie this fundraiser that we were planning to raise money for Margaret to the cause. Taking the cast and showcasing women's bodies, every size, every shape, as a beautiful work of art. So I went on down to the art supply store, bought a bus bunch of plaster, and tried to figure out how to make these, this cast I saw on Frida. So I went to Mona's house, our co-founder of Keep Abreast, and this is actually, I brought an artifact. <laughs> this is actually the first breast cast ever made. She still keeps it in this little box. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I didn't know she kept it in this box until years ago. And um, this is a picture of Mona with one of her breast casts that's painted. And she's actually six years cancer free. <laughs> Yay! So once I felt like I had figured out how to make this cast, we invited all of our friends over and made the first ever keep a breast cast in the kitchen, which it's messy. So <laughs> that's a good place to do it. And the first cast were shown at an art show. So we took the cast and we showed them in Lake Tahoe at an exhibition and art show. It was a snowboarding event where the Beastie Boys were playing. So this was like a big deal. At this event, we had raised a few thousand dollars, maybe $3,000 for the milk bank that was providing milk for Margaret's brand new baby daughter, Asha. Margaret passed away only three weeks after her daughter, Asha, was born. I love this photo of her. <laughs> um, you know, when your heart breaks, a door opens. And you decide in your life how you want to cross that threshold. Are you going forward with love, or are you just going to let fear and sadness consume you? 
Margaret's daughter, Asha, will be 18 years old this June. And in a recent interview, she said, my passion definitely lies in art. I love the way that art can spark conversations and thoughts and inspire people. Seeing the way that people react to a piece of art is one of my favorite things. Me too. <laughs> so this is Mona and I at that first ever exhibition of the breast casts in Lake Tahoe. This exhibition was so successful. We only had planned to do Keep a Breast ever as a one-time event to help Margaret, but instantly we got so much press and so many artists and athletes wanted to get involved. Bam. <laughs> then we started working with the surf brand Roxy, and Roxy started inviting us all over the world to do these beautiful breast cast exhibitions. We were doing shows in Paris, Prague, Australia, and China. Bam. <laughs> Then I had this, what some people thought was crazy, I didn't think it was crazy, idea to make a bracelet that said, I love boobies. I made this bracelet as a way to start a conversation about breast cancer, but also as a way for people to wear their support for someone they love, like close to them, on their wrist. I made this at the time that the Live Strong bracelet was out. And you guys probably that remember that bracelet, Nike made, billions with that thing. And I kind of thought that bracelet was lame. So I wanted to make something that was like bright and bold, which is what I did. Um, overnight, we sold 12 million of these bracelets. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> this bracelet put Keep a Rest on the map in a new way. It was cool and controversial, and it really got young people talking about breast cancer, specifically about breast cancer prevention with each other and with their families. Young people were posting I Love Boobies bracelet unboxing videos on their YouTubes, and they were talking about this cause and what it means to them and why they support Keep a Breast. Some people obviously don't like boobies as much as I do because these bracelets were getting banned in schools across the country. And these two girls actually were suspended from their school from wearing this bracelet. They got represented by the ACLU and they even were in a court case that went all the way to the Supreme Court. Bam. <laughs> At the same time, while all this was going on, we got invited to be part of this super cool music festival called the Vans Warp Tour. This tour travels to 50 cities in two months every summer. And it was our opportunity to create what we call our traveling education booth. This booth goes to places and educates them where they are, when they're out having a great day, having fun. We created educational materials that were cool and engaging as a way to draw people in to talk about something that is so serious. We did this tour for 19 summers, literally educating thousands and thousands and thousands of teens. Bam. <laughs> Here's a little video that will give you a glimpse into what that world is all about. I just think it's a great cause. It's something that can, you know, help a lot of people, a lot of young people. People aren't thinking about going and getting a mammogram. And there are times when I've been in the shower and I've gone, remember that time on Warp Tour when you said three fingers, squish your boob about, go in circles. Um, it's just simple knowledge that helps, you know, and I think it's something that a lot of us need to be equipped with in this day and age. And I love that someone's doing it. Probably the best experience I've ever had on working with Keep a Breast is actually the first day of Warp Tour, this kid walks up to me with his hand sticking straight out, walks right into the tent, and was like, I just want to thank you. And I was like, what for? What did I do? I've never met this kid. And he's like, I just wanted to thank you because I brought my mom into your booth last summer on Warp Tour, and you guys showed her how to check herself, and had you not, she wouldn't be going through treatment right now. I actually went through it with my mom or went through the whole process um, of chemo and radiation and, and all of that stuff. 
when I was about 15, which is about the same age that a lot of these kids are now. So I think it's specific, it's especially important to me that, you know, the educational process is happening for kids um, now. You know, if having a bracelet that says, I love boobies is going to get them to a place where we can talk to them and connect to them and, and make an impact, then so be it. I found out about Keep Abreast because I kept seeing kids at school wearing the I Heart Boobies bracelets. The only thing I know about what Keep Abreast does is, um, from what I saw today, I saw the do-it-yourself breast, breast exams and um, the stuff that they have here at the booth. As someone personally affected by breast cancer, when I see a band making an active effort to help support any organization like this, uh, I feel a deeper connection to what they're doing with their music and their art. I will listen to what Keep Abreast says more often because there is an influential band that I love advocating for them. And I think it's really cool that they're at Warped Tour together. If, if they look up to us in any way and we're promoting a positive thing like that and telling them to listen to this stuff and look at this stuff then that's really good you know it's just it's all positive things it's just people looking out for each other and that's really good. I'm 16 and most people my age um, do feel that boobs are really taboo and that bre like breasts they're not something that you talk about or think about a lot but from Keep a Breast I've learned that it's actually really important to be aware of yourself and to take care of yourself, and I feel like more people my age would really benefit from all the things that Keep Abreast has been teaching me personally about how boobs should not be taboo. Being here and talking to these kids, like not even just empowering the kids to do cool things, but to like for them to inspire their own parents to do it, it's, it speaks a lot. When I first started Keep Abreast 15 years ago, it was important for me to create an organization that spoke to young people. At that time, I was in my early 20s and nobody was talking to me about breast health. And I felt that there were so many organizations out there that were about the cure and were about after cancer. And I wanted to do something different that was DIY, that was punk rock, that was educating my peers, my friends about their health. That's why Keep Abreast is the type of organization that it is, and that's where we will always stay. We always want to talk to communities that traditionally aren't talked to about this disease, and young people is why we're here right now, because we can educate them before this disease starts. We can teach them about early detection. We can teach them how to live a non-toxic lifestyle, and ultimately, we will be saving lives, one life at a time, one experience at a time, one family at a time. It all makes a difference. When Mona and I started Keep Abreast 19 years ago, next year will be our 20th anniversary, which is so exciting. I was 27 at the time, and I was working as a clothing designer. And one day, my friend Jana, who had lost her sister to breast cancer, she said to me, you know, Shaney, the work you're doing is, is important. You're helping people. You're making a difference. No one else is doing the work that you're doing. You deserve to get paid for the work that you're doing. And it honestly like, never occurred to me that this could be a job, that I could get paid to do this work. It was always just my good deed, like something I did for fun. You know, I was a clothing designer. I went to fashion school. Who was I to work in the traditional field of nonprofits. I didn't have an education in nonprofits. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was just doing it the way that I would do it. And when she said that to me, it really made me take a step back and look at my life. And I was at this job making a lot of money, designing jeans, but there was no growth for me. Every position at this company was held by a man. And Obviously, I was way more qualified than a lot of them to do their jobs. But I just, I didn't really want to spend the next 10 years of my life trying to climb that food chain. So I listened to my intuition, and I took a leap of faith, and I quit that job to focus on Keep Abreast full time. 
I've been doing that for nine years now. And I still make way less money than I made as a clothing designer, but it doesn't matter because I am gaining and I just get to give so much more. Keep abreast, as you can see, is really not like any other breast cancer organization in the world. In the traditional world of let's find a cure, we choose to say let's focus on prevention. While traditionally organizations are raising money for big pharma, we choose to educate young people on things they can do in their everyday life to lower their risk. We choose to do this in our own community, which is why we've been so successful. Our community of friends and artists just happens to be these alternative spaces. So this is me, and this is Keep Abreast. I use art to start conversations about something that is serious and complex. I use art to design information that is cool and engaging to create action. I use art to influence, <laughs> it's my friend Laura. <laughs> I use art to influence people to be a part of a community that cares about each other. I use art to meet people where they are. So this is the warp Tour. <laughs> Each one of you was born with a gift, a creative gift, and sometimes your life will put moments in front of you, bam, that will steer you towards seeing and developing that gift and how your gift wants to be used out in the world. And sometimes when you're not sure, just ask. Ask your guides, ask your guardian angels, ask the universe, just say, hey, I'm not sure what to do right now or where to go next, please put people, places, things, moments in front of me that are for my highest and greatest good. And help me see them. Make it clear. Make it easy. And then you just got to listen and pay attention. So again, I thank you guys for letting me share my story with you today. My hope is that it will inspire you to take a look inside yourself and see what your unique gifts are and how they want to be used out in the world, whether it's through your community, your friends, your family, or your career. Your gift is waiting. Thank you.